Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to continue considering our subject of resistance and resistivity. So you may recall from a previous video, we had a drum of cable fresh out the stores in the workshop. We measured the resistance of the conductor and we got a resistance for that total 100 meter drum of cable as being 1.78 ohms. We then doubled its length. We also doubled its cross-sectional area and we saw what happened to the resistance of that conductor. One thing that we didn't change in that video was the third thing that can affect the resistance of a conductor, and that is the temperature that the cable is experiencing. This is often referred to as the ambient temperature, the temperature of the air surrounding the conductor. So what we've done is we've taken the exact same drum of cable from the previous video, we've put it in the freezer overnight. So we'll grab this out of here now. So here's our exact same drum of cable from a previous video. It's extremely cold now. It's been in the freezer long enough to drop its core temperature. We're going to measure the resistance of this cable and see how that's affected its resistance. Let's go. So we've got our 100 meter drum of one millimeter squared cable out of the freezer back into the workshop. This is extremely cold right now, about minus 18 degrees C. So we're going to measure the resistance of one of the conductors and see what we get. So we've got our multifunction tester set up and ready to go. And just bear in mind that uh, this measurement we got yesterday was 1.78 ohms in resistance. So we're going to see what's happened to that now. So we're going to measure the resistance of one of the conductors. They're all one mil inside this cable, so it doesn't matter which one we measure, but we'll measure the brown one, the line conductor, and we'll see what resistance we get. So remember yesterday, in a previous video, the measurement was 1.78 ohms, and we've now dropped right down to 1.66 ohms. So the resistance has fallen. This rule is true for most materials, that if you reduce the temperature of the conductor, you will reduce its resistance. So now let's continue looking at the resistance of our cable. So we'll repeat the experiment that we did yesterday just to confirm all the values. So remember, we've got a 100 meter drum of cable and it's one millimeter squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the two ends of the cable together. So now what we've done is we've taken that 100 meters of conductor and we've effectively doubled its length by shorting it out at this end. If we now measure across the line and neutral conductors at this end, then we will be measuring 200 meters of conductor instead of 100 meters. So let's measure this now and see what we get. So you can see again, we're getting 3.17 ohms. So two things to note here. Number one, the resistance is smaller than it was in the previous video because the cable is colder. So we've reduced the resistance by reducing the temperature. Also what's happened is we've taken our original measurement of 1.66 ohms and we have just about doubled that to give us 3.17 ohms with a reasonable margin of error. So that's what we're looking at there. We have now doubled the length of the conductor and we have doubled its resistance. So what we'll do now is we'll short out both ends of this conductor. So what we've got here is if you think about this logically, we've now gone back to a 100 meter length of conductor. So by connecting this out at this end and then by testing from this connector block to this connector block, we're only actually measuring 100 meters in length because we've connected these two together. So what we've done now is we've gone back to our 100 meter length and we have doubled the cross-sectional area of the conductor. So it's gone from being a one mil conductor to a two mil conductor. So let's see what happens to the resistance now. So think carefully about what you expect the value to be. So remember when we measured this as a 100 meter, one mil conductor, we got about 1.66 ohms. So what's gonna to happen to that resistance now? Let's see, I've changed my test probes. So I'm just going to short my meter out again and zero it. So we'll set the resistance of this connection to zero now. So have you had a think about it? Can you figure out what you think the measurement will be? Let's measure it and confirm what you're thinking. So we've got about 0.77 ohms. So once again, we have doubled the cross-sectional area of the conductor. And what we've done is we've effectively halved the original resistance, again, with a reasonable margin of error built in there. So as you can clearly see, 
from the previous video combined with this video, we've got a colder conductor, we've reduced its temperature, therefore we have reduced its resistance. What we're going to do next is have a look at what happens as we take the resistance of the conductor, the temperature of the conductor, above room temperature. So in this experiment, we've taken our very cold drum of cable and we've set it up so that it's sitting above two heaters. Uh, they're going to heat up the drum of cable and we're going to do a time lapse and keep your eye on the screen of the tester there to see what happens to the resistance as the cable gets hotter. Please, please do not try this at home uh, as there is a risk of fire. We've set this up under controlled conditions. Let's see what happens. So we just saw in the time-lapse video what happens as the cable gets hotter. So we started off with a very cold cable, somewhere around minus 18 degrees C, and we heated it up uh, using the electric heaters for quite a long time. This was heating up for uh, a couple of hours, and we could see on the time-lapse video that the resistance of the cable was increasing. So let's just take an accurate measurement of that. I've already zeroed my leads. So remember, we've got a 100 meter drum of one millimeter squared cable. Those numbers are significant, as we'll see in a future video. And we can see, look what's happened to the resistance of the conductor. It's gone up to 2.04 ohms. So far beyond the original reading, which you remember was 1.78 ohms at ambient room temperature. So the resistance of the cable has gone up by, by a measurable amount, by quite a considerable amount. So let's just repeat our experiment to prove that what we know is true. So here we've got 2.04 ohms on our cable there. If we now connect out the line and the neutral, we can see that what's going to happen is that the resistance will behave in a certain way, which hopefully we've seen this a couple of times now, so we should know how this is going to behave. And what are you expecting the reading to be? Remember we had 2.04, we've now doubled the length of the conductor, so it's gone from 100 meters to 200 meters. What reading should we get? Let's see. That's all absolutely beautiful. Look at that, 4.08 ohms. So it has exactly doubled the resistance. So you double the length of the conductor, you double its resistance. And let's double check here. If we, now we're back to 100 meters of cable. And what we're going to do now is we're going to double the cross-sectional area. So now we've got 100 meters of a two millimeter squared cable and we'll swap out our crocodile clips for the probes. And if we measure from one end to the other, remember we had 2.04 ohms, so what should we be getting? Try and figure it out in your head. And let's confirm what you've got. one06 ohms so just a little bit above the 1.02 that we were expecting but well within acceptable margins so let's just summarize what we've learned over the past couple of videos we know that as you increase length you increase resistance they are directly proportional as you increase cross-sectional area you decrease resistance they are inversely proportional and for the vast majority of materials including the copper that this cable is made out of if you increase temperature you increase resistance. Once again, they are directly proportional. Thank you for watching.